Hello everybody, welcome to my weekly Life or Biz Wisdom and what I wanted to do today was actually talk to you a little bit about a book that I absolutely love uh, called The Seven, ha ha Ugh, the Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey. What I want to actually start to do is to talk about some books. I'll do a book series of books that have really influenced me. It's not a formal review of whether I think they're good or not. I actually think they're really good or else I wouldn't be talking about them. So if you're actually wanting more of an overall review of the books that I talk about, then you can Google those and get absolutely uh, heaps of reviews online. You can also search for these titles of the books that I'm going to be talking to, uh, talking about as we go forward, you can actually search uh, the titles online and you can actually get some summaries, uh, book summaries. I will often do that if there's somebody's told me about a book and I think, oh wow, that sounds, sounds interesting, but I want to know more before I actually buy it, for instance, or just get a really quick feel for what the book's about. So I will search on online for a summary uh, of the book and there's lots of people that are doing summaries now and I found that really quite helpful. So I just felt that I am such a, an avid reader that I would love to be able to impart to you some of the knowledge that I've gained, some of the wisdom from the books that I've read that have helped to shape me either in my business and or in my life generally. And what I've found actually, really, and this book tonight is a really good example of this, is that whilst some books may appear to be business focused or because it's my specialty uh, is productivity, some of them may be productivity focused just as this one is tonight. But underneath that, and probably more fundamentally, they're actually around self-improvement. They're around what I call self-mastery. And that I think is because we can't be productive in life or in our businesses and we certainly can't be good at business if we're not able to master ourselves or manage uh, ourselves in terms of how we go about our lives and our businesses and what's happening for us on the personal level. Because even when we're in business, we're still an individual person carrying on our own lives. And so there's this blurring between life and business, and I've mentioned this before. And that's why these books, I think, have certainly, I can speak for myself, have had really some of them quite profound uh, um, impacts on me in the way that I, I work in terms of productivity and in my business but also, perhaps even more so, for me on an individual level in my own personal life. So one really good example, as I said, is the book that I want to talk about with you tonight, which is, and I'll show you, up, I'll show you my version, I'm sorry it's going to be backwards, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey. So this is actually an older edition. I'm sure newer editions have got um, a different page. Stephen Covey uh, was um, uh, an American author who really was uh, very, very, uh, really insightful about human behaviour and how in terms of effectiveness and the habits that we need to develop around becoming more effective, about how clever he was in developing this framework uh, for how we can get for, get ahead in our in our lives generally and as I said we can apply it to our businesses and he became very very famous you may well have heard of him there was a whole string of other books that he developed uh, following this one but this is the cardinal the seminal book and and his son has actually because uh, Stephen Covey senior who was the author of this book has since passed away but his son Stephen Covey junior uh, has carried on uh, the business and um, uh, uh, the legacy that his father has left 
So this is not a new book. It's actually been around for quite a few years. But again, when they're classics... You know, they stand the test of time, and I definitely think that um, uh, this book does that. So I want to just talk about, and I've got a few notes because I can't remember all the habits off um, from memory, but I want to just, um, just sort of mention to begin with what is the overarching uh, philosophy or, or premise of Stephen Covey's view with regards to what uh, underlies the uh, framework, the seven habits that he then goes on in the book to describe in detail. And that is, the underlying premise is that we, the way that we see the world is based on our own perceptions. How we view the world depends on what it is that we are perceiving or thinking about at any given time. So if we want things to change in the world, what Stephen Covey suggests is that we need to change ourselves. Now that's not a that's been uh, described and suggested by suggested by a whole lot of other uh, influential influencers, thought leaders. But but as I said, this is not a new book. I think it came out in the if not 70s, early 80s. And the way that Steve, I think Stephen Covey is such a great writer and the way that he talks about it, uh, it and because it is, it was an early book uh, with regards to this message, I think that it, it's, it certainly has a lot of, a lot of uh, importance. And even if you have heard it before, I think also it can be useful hearing different authors uh, talk about it in their own way, putting their own slant on it. So, as I said, that's his uh, premise, that if we want to change things out in the world or change a situation, we need to look at the view that we have of it. So I'm NLP trained, so Neuro Linguistic Programming, if, if you're familiar with that. And what this Stephen Covey suggests that comes to mind for me then is we can reframe things. So it's not so much what happens to us, it's our perception of, of or the view that we take based on what happens to us and the thoughts and the beliefs, the attitudes, the emotions that we develop, that we create for ourselves as a result of that external situation. And um, this is... This is actually really empowering because it means that we can take what might be viewed as a really negative situation and look at how to empower ourselves and potentially others by viewing it differently, perhaps in a more uh, positive way that is more empowering rather than disempowering. And when I talk about success in life and in business, empowerment, self-empowerment and empowering others is absolutely crucial. So that sort of sets the scene for um, the rest of his framework, which as I said, is seven habits. So the seven habits of highly effective people means that if we, if we were to create these seven habits and maintain them for ourselves, it will, it will inevitably uh, allow us to become more effective as people. And that's whatever roles in life we, we take. As I said, whether it's business, whether it's our personal lives, uh, it can be me as a mother, as a, as a daughter, as a, uh, a friend, you know, in a, a business situation. If you're, uh, watching this and you're employed in an employed, uh, situation at your work, whatever role it is that we take in life, these are, uh, habits that can empower us so that we can be more effective as as people. So the first habit that I want to talk about is to be proactive. So be proactive is the first habit that Stephen Covey uh, suggests. And basically what he means by that is for us to be proactive and not reactive in life. So when we are proactive, we are taking our, our, our power and we are actually viewing things where we are taking self-responsibility rather than being a victim and rather than being reactive. 
So we, we uh, analyse things, we reflect and we look at what might be our responsibility in a situation happening and then what might be other people's, but very fundamentally knowing that it's our responsibility that will help to empower us in a situation, irrespective of what other people who might be involved in a situation do. And, and by, being, by taking responsibility, we know that the buck stops with us. Ultimately, the buck st stops with us. And again, referring back to this idea I just mentioned before about our, perce our perceptions about a situation, and that's where we can take self-responsibility, will actually help us in the situation. Now, it depends on the exact circumstances, but again, it, with the first habit being be proactive, I'm reminded of NLP, uh, an, an NLP premise of a cause versus effect. And when I'm the cause, I'm being proactive. I am taking responsibility for something happening, whereas if I'm in effect, it means I'm being the victim mode. And I'll talk about that, I'll probably do another video at some point talking more specifically about cause and effect. But the idea with this first habit is to be proactive in as much as you can do in your life, in your work, in at home, in your own, in your own uh, view and perceptions, in your own habits, in your own communication with yourself and with others. In, in all sorts of ways to be proactive as much as possible rather than reactive and to take self-responsibility rather than letting other people take responsibility for you. So that's habit number one. The second habit is to begin with the end in mind. So what Stephen Covey suggests is that for practically everything that we do, we want to have an idea of what it is that we want as an outcome. To, to begin with the end in mind, to have some, for instance, it can be uh, a vision for our, our businesses, but in, indeed for our lives. Where do we want to be in five years, 10 years, 20 years, 50 years? So to have an idea of the destination, so to speak, and so that that will help to guide our journey. Now that can be uh, bringing it back from, you know, that's very big picture talking about a vision. It can also be for everyday things like if I'm talking on the phone with somebody, whether it be again in my personal life or in my business, what is the, what is the aim? What's the outcome I want from this conversation? If I have a meeting at work, and you, I'm sure, uh, will want to have for yourselves, if you're um, having meetings, what is the outcome? Why else are we meeting if we don't understand and agree upon what is the desired outcome? And what happens, of course, is that when we have the end in mind, it helps with our visualising, it helps with our unconscious mind being drawn, almost pulled towards actually having that vision become into, uh, come into reality, which is really, really uh, amazing stuff. So as I said, that is um, beginning with the end in mind, having the vision, and he also talks about the importance of having, uh, being clear on our vision, oh sorry, our values, which works in with our vision as well. So that's the second one. The third one is put first things first. So this is one of my favourite of his, of his habits where he talks about the importance of knowing the difference between something being important versus urgent. So you might have heard me talk about before uh, the what is called the either the Eisenhower matrix or the, or the urgent important matrix. And... Eisenhower Matrix, uh, it, was, it was developed by President Eisenhower, one of the American presidents uh, back in, I think, the 50s, and Stephen Covey has popularised it in, his, in this book. Basically, and I won't go through the whole matrix now, again, that's the subject for another video, but just to understand the difference between urgent versus important, and when he says put first things first, what he's meaning is to actually prioritise the important things over the urgent things. Now, something can be important and urgent. Something can be important but not urgent. And whichever those two things are, 
you want to actually prioritize what's important rather than what's urgent. If it's if it's uh, important and urgent, then it's a crisis, and obviously do that uh, do that first, and then the urgent but not important do that second. So there are also things just quickly that are uh, urgent. Um, but not important. So you do, you actually don't want to do those uh, first. As I said, the important things, and they tend to be the things that are around uh, the quality of our life, of our relationships with people around us, of our self-care in terms of, you know, things like uh, physical activity, exercise, nutrition, sleep, all those things that they're not urgent. If we miss them for a day, it probably won't have that much of an impact, but over a period of time, it really does. So first things first, looking at prioritizing what's important over what's urgent. And in fact, he has this phrase, and I'll read it out, the key is to schedule your priorities. Don't prioritize what's on your schedule. So to understand the difference with those two. Okay, habit four, and he's starting to look more at an interpersonal uh, way of, of, of communicating um, other, with other people. And that is around thinking win-win. So what he's saying with this is that we really want to be working with the, the goal of being in a win-win situation with other people. Again, whether it's friends, family, whether it's work colleagues, whatever. The idea with that is that that means that we both have equal power, we have equal decision making, we have equal buy-in, we have therefore equal uh, proceeds, so to speak, of whatever the, the situation is, the relationship is, um, uh, what it is that you're working on together. So what we don't want to do is dominate the other person or the other people because we have the power, but that means that the other people don't. And uh, it's actually not an, an equal relationship. And he very much uh, recommends that as much as possible, we be in an equal relationship with other people because then we're harnessing the benefits, the strengths of, of all the people involved. And similarly, we don't want to give away all our power to somebody else because then we are compromised and we don't have, it's harder for us to have that self-responsibility that I was talking about before if somebody else is dominating us. So the best way to be is to be in a win-win and that's very much what I talk about. I'm into, you know, Libran, I'm into harmonizing and I believe in a strength-based a strengths-based approach and that, that it is, you know, by and large, it's possible to get that. Maybe not at every single situation, but in a lot more situations than what you might think. So Stephen Covey suggests that you consider what might be ways that you can win-win in situations maybe, again, in your personal life, family, friends, and, and also in work. Then the next one uh, is habit five. Although I will just say, Stephen Covey says that this takes, to be in a win-win, it takes a lot of courage and it takes a lot of consideration, both for yourself and for the other person. So it's not always easy, but it's something for us to aspire to as much as we can. Okay, habit five is then synergizing. And he says, if we can really understand the differences. So the win-win was perhaps looking at the similarities with ourselves and other people. In synergizing, it's looking at where we are coming from and what might be the differences with uh, somebody else, where they're coming from, or a group of people, where they're coming from. And that between the differences, we can actually look at what the synergy is, what the space is in between that. And that space can really uh, empower all of us with all those who are involved in coming up with uh, having different understandings. I can learn from other people who've got a different viewpoint from me just as they can learn 
from us. And that can help with a win-win situation. But we need to be able to appreciate what those differences are, to respect them, and to understand how we can use them to come up with new solutions, new ways of solving problems. Um, and, and alternatives to uh, ways of, of thinking that we haven't had before. Uh, and I'll just get, um, sorry, uh, habit five. Um, sorry, that was um, habit six. I missed habit five. I'll just go to that now. Seek first to understand, then to be understood. Now, that might seem a little bit confusing to begin with, but what Stephen Covey means with that is seek to seek first to understand is to listen before we talk listen to other people hear them out it's actually really clever to do that because we get a really good insights into what other people's perceptions are what are they thinking that will actually then mean that we can respond having that knowledge it's also about respect and how we can, if we, if we all listen, allow the other person to talk, then it may well be that we change our viewpoint based on what they said. And I'm not saying that we have to, but it may enlighten our viewpoints. And we can't be saying things if we're not understanding where the other person is truly coming from. So uh, seek first to understand, listen, and then to be understood, then we have our say. And our say is just as important with us uh, uh, speaking and communicating as much as the other person. But when we have more information from the other person where we're seeking to understand, that will inform and allow us to be understood better by other people. So asking more questions, getting more information, having an understanding of how the other person is thinking, and then we can speak. And that actually helps with better communication. So habit six, as I said, was synergize about understanding the differences uh, between uh, us and other people and how we can come up with really good possibility, uh, alternate possibilities when we um, harness those energies. And then habit seven, the last habit, is another one of my favorites, which is sharpen the saw. That's a phrase, you may have heard that before, that's actually become really quite uh, popular, uh, a vernacular that uh, means that uh, the analogy or the reference is to uh, cutting down trees. Um, we can't cut down a tree with a blunt saw. Now, the cutting down the tree, the reference, uh, what that means is we can't actually progress in our lives. We can't have an effective life, a successful life, if we are not sharpening the saw. And what Stephen Covey refers to that is uh, uh, having uh, the activities, undertaking the activities in our lives that have real meaning. And that, that goes back to the, uh, when I was talking before about the Eisenhower matrix and the urgent versus important. This sharpening the saw ref, ref, refers to the important but not urgent. So the things, as I mentioned, about relationships, for instance, about planning, having that vision, what are our goals in our lives or our businesses? Uh, also around, as I said, self-care and how we spend our days on a day-to-day -day basis, the depth of meaning that our lives has, what is our life's purpose? And for me, being spiritual and creative, I have to incorporate spirituality into my everyday life. Meditation, the way that I think, the way that I look, I view gratitude and, and um the way that I communicate with others and the degree of respect and living what I call consciously rather than unconsciously and the creativity around allowing uh, space in my life for being creative, whether that's in terms of art or dreaming and uh, writing, journaling, you know, all sorts of things. And of course, for you, you can work out what's important for you. So they, as I said, that's a life purpose. So really spending the time 
and prioritizing those things so that your saw will sharpen using Stephen Covey's analogy and you'll be able to cut down the tree which probably isn't so politically correct these days as I said the book was written quite a long uh, a long time ago but in essence the 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 message is still just as valid that if we want to be effective be successful in our lives it is these day-to-day -day habits that we base or create on the things that are really important to us. Not the urgent, chaotic crises that can, that can come up in the, and the superficial day-to-day -day stuff. It's making the space for the deep, meaningful things in our lives. That will actually lead us, as I said, to be more effective and more successful. So I really hope that this stimulates your appetite for wanting to read the book. Obviously, when you read the book, you'll be able to get a lot more information uh, that underpins each of these habits. But I wanted to give you a bit of an idea of what these habits are. And I have been able to use these in my life generally and in my business. And they very much relate, of course, as I said earlier, to my specialty of productivity. And I've used them in, in both my business and my, and my personal life, and they've had a, a really big impact. I love the framework. I think it's, um, it's simple. It's not necessarily easy to implement, but it's simple. And there's a big difference between those two things, which actually uh, my creative, my intuition tells me to do a video on that as well. Anyway, I will leave that for now. As usual, any comments, any questions, please put them in the comments below. Uh, if you have read the book and think uh, either that it was wonderful or not so wonderful, please, I'd love to hear your feedback on it. And also any, any suggestions uh, for any books that you think are really, really seminal books in terms of self uh, self development self improvement business productivity success uh, those sort of um, categories or topics uh, or areas of our lives and our business i 'd love for you to let me know again either in the um, in the uh, comments below or you can contact me privately so with that I will uh, encourage you to think about those habits that i 've talked about and how you might be able to apply them to your life and your business and if you do that, you're welcome to. In fact, I'd love you to let me know how, how you go with it. I'd love to hear. Okay, I will leave it there. I wish you a great week as always, and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.